Welcome to the Bob Balance HealthCast, episode number 294. Never died again. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. You ever worry about your weight? You ever try to lose weight? You ever try to diet? Do you ever have people look at you and say, oh my God, have you put on weight or have you lost weight? <laughs> Our society in, in many ways is obsessed with the concepts of weight. And in the New York Times this week on 5-8-16, there was a thought piece, an editorial or opinion piece that was published by the author of an upcoming book who has struggled with weight issues all her life, has dieted, and has had the, the success that many dieters have, which is on the diet, you lose weight. When you go off the diet, you put the weight back on. And she has struggled with her weight issues, as she describes. And so she has written a book that basically recommends that you should never diet again and that diets are a waste of time, money, and energy, and that you need to learn more about what she calls mindful eating and learn to just love yourself and accept yourself, whatever your weight set point happens to be. And those are concepts that she, she puts in her book, and the book is, is called Why Diets Make Us Fat, The Unintended Consequences of Our Obsession with Weight Loss. And the author of the piece and the book is Sandra uh, Amot. And she is a PhD uh, neuro Science. scientist, mm -hmm. if I've gotten that correctly. And so we thought we would talk about her piece in the Times today because there, there are any number of points that she makes that we want to have reactions to. We, <laughs> we may agree or disagree. We may expand on the concepts. Her piece is pretty narrowly focused in support of her agenda. So we want to talk about some of the points that she makes in the article. Mm -hmm. And then we want to talk about some of our own thoughts with our experiences in dealing with or treating people who have weight issues and concerns. I mean, we have BioBalance Health has a weight. Yes. We have a weight program that is extremely successful, mm -hmm. but we don't, maybe it's a word diet because all the fad diets mm -hmm. that she's trying to, that she's trying to criticize. But if you change how you eat for the rest of your life, that's not really a diet, but right. that's what we use and that's what people think of right. when they embark on trying to get to a certain size or trying to be healthy. I don't think that telling people you don't have to diet, which means to them you don't have to watch what you eat and you don't have to do anything with your food, right. you can exercise more. That doesn't work for most people. Exercising more and eating whatever you want, especially if it's... Well, yeah, if you if exercise two hours food a day and, and then you go have a Twinkie and a, a scotch. Right, or you're not, five Twinkies and five scotches, yeah, right. which is what the American excess syndrome is. Right. You know, that we can't just have one and we don't eat the right food and it doesn't. It, we don't look at it as fuel. We should be looking at food, food as this is going to make my cells, make me who I am. And if I eat a Twinkie, that means I'm going to be a Twinkie. Yuck. Well, but diets can be successful and historically have mm -hmm. been successful in, in the cases of specific goal-driven agendas. Right. You know, if I want to lose from a size 8 to a size 6 in time for my daughter's wedding in six months and then forget about it and then go back to being who I am. Mm -hmm. if I, if you see a lot of stuff marketed, uh, swimsuit season is coming. If you want to look your best <laughs> in a swimsuit this summer, mm -hmm. you know, shed 5 pounds, shed 10 pounds. And so people can do that successfully, but the, by just dieting, by ju pretty much. Uh, but then when that's over, they haven't changed their approach to food, their approach to eating, their lifestyle, and so they go back and and often experience a subsequent weight gain beyond just getting back to where they had started. Right. They pump it up another five pounds because they overconsume what they've been deprived of for a period of time. And she speaks to that whole deprivation impact on eating. She really uh, doesn't speak to the over 40 or over 50 women, men who, um, 
don't have their hormones anymore. So, I mean, don't have an adequate amount of testosterone or, or maybe estrogen or maybe have an estrogen excess. She doesn't speak to that. And that is one thing that we think is key, yeah. especially in people who are aging, although 40 doesn't look so old to me now. And um, looking back, looking I'm back, it looks, yeah, it I can yeah. still remember that. But, but everything does change at that point. And if you lose weight after you've lost your testosterone and then you gain your weight back, you've lost muscle and you don't gain muscle. You've, I mean, lost fat, lost muscle to lose your weight, to change your size. And then when you gain it back, you gain fat, which is something she didn't really talk about because she's a PhD and she's not a medicine, a medical clinician. So So, so would you rather flip this then and approach it from the uh, concerns that we have that she didn't write about and then talk about the things she did write about? Because that's the first one on the list is hormone regulation. Right. I mean, but but we're talking about diets working Mm -hmm. and diets not working. Right. And we find that there are many things that you can do to make a diet actually work, set your set point of your, that's what she calls it, set point of your normal weight down to a different level. Her contention seems to be, and and lots of researchers and writers on this topic Mm -hmm. use the same concept, is that your body has a natural set point, which is like a plateau for your weight, and that you can diet down to its set point, uh, but you're not going to lose after that. If you keep mm-hmm. dieting, you keep exercising, that if you if you manage to stay on it long enough, you can drop your weight below it. But the second year off the diet, you pop back up to whatever your set point was. But she says the set point Can't never change. changes. Right. Well, I have to say that as you age and you don't do hormones and you don't change your diet and you don't exercise more, your set point goes up mm-hmm. every year. Which is and a change. Which is a change. Yeah. It, I think what she meant to say, but maybe it's how the article was written and not in the book, was that the set point of where you're healthy doesn't change. Well, she describes her own journey of struggling mm-hmm. with her weight throughout her lifetime. Mm-hmm. And her conclusion is that she's decided to accept herself as she is and then learn to eat more mindfully, not be driven by hungers or frustration or anger or anxiety to eat but to think about the food she eats, which we support and, mm-hmm. and recommend. I mean, mindful eating, as we understand the term, is a good thing for everybody to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she says that you should do that and you should not hate yourself or yeah, be dismissive I mean, of yourself because whatever your set point is, it is. So just be, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> to quote song. And then we'll all get fatter every single I mean, to me, that's... That is a big challenge for Americans because that tells them, oh, you're off the hook. It's not your fault. You were born with this set point. I mean, that's how I read it. So obviously, and we're on different kind of different uh, tracks here because when I read it, I thought, oh, no, my patients are going to come in and say, I can have Twinkies, whatever I crave, I can eat because it's just me and I'm not going to make any progress. Well, my patients make huge progress. Uh And they change their set point. And I've changed my set point. And I was a dieter my whole life, meaning I changed how I ate. Not I changed how I ate for three weeks. Right. I changed how I ate. Yes. And then improved. It has to be a lifestyle. And lowered you commit to. my set point. Right. As I, oh, that doesn't work for me. That's really bad for me. If I eat, if I eat breads, if I have too much wine, if I, you know, too, sugars were my issue, fats are other people's issues. I mean, when you know your own issue and you change it, you can change your set point. Well, it, you can. And for a lifetime. And for a lifetime. And you should. But it's hard to do in American society because we are a fast food, mass consumption produced food society. And the manufacturers of that food have included addictive ingredients like uh, corn sugar uh, corn to, to, to make you come back and crave and want those things. Yeah. And what everybody said for a long time that deals with this field is you need to eat a balanced diet that involves fresh foods and mm-hmm. greens and fruits and nuts. At every meal. And 
it's hard for people to do that because they don't think that way, they don't shop that way, they don't cook that way, and it's a lot faster to drive through McDonald's and load up on a double Big Mac and a, and a large order of fries. You want that supersized and a huge <laughs> soda. Yeah, uh, and that just and fill themselves, and then they're craving the salts and sugars that are added to those foods. From then on, it sets their hunger at a different level, and, and then their their set point goes up. Right, but I mean, I don't say that I never eat that. It, but I, I, if I eat that, then I'm going to, if I can't get it there, I'm going to go home and eat celery and uh, red peppers and something that has food. Kale, dark greens. Food cabbage. for my biome, yeah. you know, for all of those intestinal bacteria that need something to live on. There's nothing in that fried fried potato and bread and McDonald's hamburger that your biome can live on. Especially and when biomes, it's a mashed and extruded potato. I right. Mean. I mean, it's just like, and they make mashed and then, I mean, probably potato flakes. I don't know. I haven't been, I haven't worked McDonald's, so I don't know. But I've never it asked. Lived. I know. I should ask one of their, their people how it works. <laughs> but all I know is that it's so many, it's enough calories for an entire day at one sitting. I'll tell you how it works. It comes in a bag in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. And they, they fry it right there. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. <laughs> From someone who knows. I've worked in this. <laughs> so, so there's many things I agree. You shouldn't be ashamed of your weight. But if you're not unhappy with your weight, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You know, if you're not unhappy that you've increased your size. I mean, women come in and say, I was the same size my whole life and I hit 40. Right. And I've now gained three sizes and I'm not buying another size. I'm not, I, I can't buy another size of clothes because psychologically it's killing me. And that's when your food and your wardrobe are in denial with each other. Right. And so, and so then, but, but it, they tell me what they eat and they haven't really eaten more. It's their, uh, their, their whole body changed. body changed. Yes. And so they, and if they were to eat so much less that, that just by calories in calories out, they'd be starving and their body would shut down. So that doesn't work. So you have to add back the hormones you had. So I'm messing. I, I'm really messing up. No, no. Your um, your uh, Pre outline agenda. Yeah, but I mean, why don't we go through the things that well, we that we agreed with? Well, as Darwin said, that adapt, survive. So I'll just adapt. <laughs> yeah, you're a very good adapter. Yeah. And since my um, ADD just kind of goes crazy. <laughs> um, so so let's talk about what we agreed with. Okay. With her article. So all right. So uh, one of the things was. Um, we agree with mindful. We've already mindful mentioned eating. mindful eating mm -hmm. and weight set point, mm -hmm. but we disagree that set points can't be changed. That's we think true. they do change. It well, takes we've, work. we've seen them. Or, we we see them and yeah. we've had them and you've had them. You're yeah. 35 pounds thinner or yeah. way less than right. you did when I met you. Right. Well, part of her argument, and, and this is what is distressing for me, uh, she makes the argument that people who are obese diet to try to lose their obesity. And then she extrapolates from that conclusions about mortality and death rate. And her summary, if I've understood mm -hmm. it right. accurately, mm -hmm. her summary is that people that are obese die from all the other causes that other people die from <laughs> and not from the obesity. Uh, so no, they shouldn't I mean, worry about that's it. They not worry true. about the other stuff like that's exercise. Absolutely and not true. Proper eating. Because obesity causes diabetes. Obesity causes heart disease. Obesity increases your risk for breast cancer. Obesity and, and the foods that you eat to become obese also play a part in all of those diseases that kill us. She so says that's that there not is true. research that shows the opposite. She well, there may cite be a, the research there may in be the article. Some research. But right. the body of research that has has looked at this, and she, all she's looking at is obesity. She's not looking at the articles that I see every week that come out and say right. diabetes uh, is at higher risk if you're obese, well, and so is of breast type cancer. Diabetes are skyrocketing in this right. country, and as that's people age and continue to eat what. And they how eat. you stop type two diabetes is mm -hmm. you lose weight. Mm -hmm. That's it. So it is associated with diabetes. As your hormones I change, mean, you lose obesity. the ability to process sugars. Yeah. And if you replace those hormones, you can recover some of that. Uh, 
so so the goal is we would recommend and understand and what you do in your practice mm-hmm. is you regulate hormones and you have a diet program and people mm-hmm. manage to lose weight and it's not just a diet program like food yeah a weight it's management program weight management right. it's it's lifestyle it, right. we use medications we use we, we use counseling we use uh, we follow up on people and do uh, measurements, and we also mm-hmm. use hormones as our basis. Mm-hmm. Replace what's missing, thyroid, testosterone, estrogen, whatever's missing, get you back to your 30-something level, mm-hmm. which is our set point. Well, and you know, that's <laughs> one of the challenges of people who have bariatric surgery. Mm-hmm. A number, uh, a high percentage of people that get bariatric surgery to lose weight from mortality concern, obesity issues. Which means that we're making their stomach smaller. Right. Or that we're cutting out some of their stomach or we're tying off some of their stomach. And then they try to change what and how they eat. Mm-hmm. Many of them eat their way back out of whatever was done. They blow their stomachs back over. Stretch they it pop out. They the staples. They, they don't follow the recommended Or they diets. fool it because you can't eat a lot. Mm-hmm. But if you drink a milkshake. Yeah. You can get a it's whole a, lot of calories, right. sugar of calories. and everything else just by drinking it. But what they don't at least to my understanding, address enough is the hormonal issues. Right. Uh, because that hasn't been a part of their thinking. That's not been the way that they looked at it. Mm-hmm. They've looked at it in terms of, okay, we can we can stop the intake and reduce the consumption and change the consumption. And that's all we need to do. But if mm-hmm. the hormones are out of balance, the cravings and the, the issues, depression, anxiety, what have you, are also out of balance. Mm-hmm. That needs to be treated as well. It does. Absolutely. And, um, Part of why they, that works is not just we've made their stomach smaller so they get sick if their stomach is smaller. If they eat too much, it's because some two things, some of the um, hormones in the stomach that make us hungry are in the part that we are either constricting or removing. So some of those hormones that go to our brain and say you're hungry are gone and then we also change the biome or all of the bacteria in the t- intestines. We find that after that kind of surgery, all of a sudden, the bacterial, the bacterial growth in, in these people's intestines, uh, same thing you get from probiotics, but for some reason they can't get it. This, this biome gets very diverse, lots of different types of bacteria, which is ideal. They used to have three kinds. Now they have lots of different kinds, but over a year or two, their biome goes back to normal because they don't feed those bacteria. So if they were to feed them with fresh foods, fiber, and uh, fresh vegetables, that kind of thing, that's what feeds bacteria. Mm -hmm. They need fiber. They need that kind of thing, and sugar kills them, and several of the drugs we take kill them. So so that's part of what we we can add Mm -hmm. to this is that that should change your set point, right? But it doesn't always do that if right. we continue our behavior. Well, and don't do hormones. Again, we have not read her book, and her book may say more or differently than we read a 2,000 page summary that she's put in the New York Times as a way to drive the message to encourage you to read her book. But there are points that she makes in a global way in that summary that we think ought to be expanded. And maybe she couldn't do that. Maybe she didn't want to do that. We don't know. But we want to take that and address it because our concern is if people read that article in the Times and then they'll draw their own conclusions and, and, and especially people who have weight concerns will get a free pass to say, well, this person says that I shouldn't even worry about it and I should just, you know. Doctors all over the country are going, oh, no. Probably. But let's let's look at it. She talks about binge eating. Yeah, she She does. She talks about deprivation. And those are certainly concerns and patterns. And and the example that she uses of people that go through a period of deprivation, like starvation, uh, they can't get fresh foods, they can't get foods, uh, they're trapped in some way from accessing the foods that or they're they want. a third world country. And then, so they put rats on a starvation diet, mm-hmm. and then they give rats Oreos. And then she talks Oreos. about the <laughs> amount of Oreos that the rats eat. And, you know, the high sugar content, and, you know, after the starvation period, they really double up on how many Oreos they're eating. And she says people do the same thing. You know, you deprive of weight, uh, you go on a diet, you lose weight, and then you go off the diet and you grab the Oreos. Uh, I can't wait till my diet's over because I can eat blank. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can have cake again. <sighs> I can drink again. 
Yeah, uh, that's not how you should think about it. You should think about, mm, I'll have cake once a year. <laughs> well, and then she talks about binge eating and stress eating. Mm-hmm. And when people are stressed, they often eat more and more and more because carbs too, because it gives their brain a high, makes well, them feel good. And the way I understand that behavior mm-hmm. as a counselor is if you're stressing out when your coping strategies are overrun, whatever those mm-hmm. ca- coping strategies that you mm-hmm. are, have developed in your lifetime are, then you revert back to more primitive strategies. Mm-hmm. And the earliest and most primitive strategy has to do with the oral urge mm-hmm. and the feeding mechanism. Mm-hmm. And so we go and comfort ourselves with food, or at least we attempt to do that. And so we're eating things nonstop. Another issue around that same concept is when we eat but don't pay attention to our food. We eat in front of the television or we eat while we're reading a book. And you have no sense of what you're putting in your mouth, how much you're putting in your mouth, and, and you just eat until what's next to you is gone. And so my teenage son will get into a movie and eat an entire bag of potato chips. Now, he can afford it because he weighs 120 pounds. Right. And he's young. His metabolism is crazy. But there's no nutrition but really in that. It, there's no nutrition <laughs> in that, but it's not about that. It's about mm-hmm. eating, you know, as a, as a comforting behavior and a habit. Mm-hmm. So you, we have to teach people about that. Mm-hmm. We can't just say, oh, this happens because you are meant to be obese and you don't need to worry about your food and uh, or, or you need to to just be more mindful of your food, which I do agree but with. But everybody says, I'm watching my weight, and I'm like, yeah. so you're watching it go on. You know, <laughs> mind, mindful to me means that you're just watching your food. You're looking at your food and going, oh, I know what I'm eating, and it's all, you know, carbs. But it doesn't mean you're going to restrict something that's bad for you. And over time, say, you and I have discussed this before, when we have we find ourselves on, you know, like our own little stress eating, and then we're hungry for more and we're hungry, you know, maybe it's pretzels, maybe it's popcorn, but we're, we eat something and we go, Oh, I need more of that. I need more of that. So it's because the more carb you eat, right. the more carb you want. Well, and sometimes and, it's emotionally driven. I mean, yeah. I, I had a lot of clients that would come in and say, I'm desperate to lose weight. I've got to lose weight. I'm going to go on a diet. And they would, their approach to it was, I just won't eat you know, for a day or two or mm-hmm. three and see how much weight I can lose. Then they go on a scale and they haven't lost what they thought they should or lose. Or anything. And then they say, screw it, I'm just going to go eat Twinkies. And they do. Right, you know, and so that's an emotional mad. answer. It's an emotional answer. And she says that. She says, studies show that long-term dieters tend to eat for emotional reasons and or simply because food is available. But mm-hmm. food is sort of a globally defined term. And if they're eating a bag of chips or a bag of Oreos, that's not really food. That's true. Yeah. It isn't. It is, it is, and it isn't, but it's the food that we put in our kitchens, and we don't have to have them in our kitchens right. if we don't buy well, that's them. That's part of what we try to teach people. Don't have it in the house. Don't buy it. Don't, you know, don't get fast prepared foods. Make, make your house be somewhere you have to cook a meal. And I, one last thing, because nothing is everybody. Right. I mean, yes. she's kind of saying everybody, blank, blank, blank. Yeah. So for a period of time, we did genetic testing on people because they wanted it. Mm-hmm. And we came back with amazing genetic propensities or genetic tendencies that really are the baseline of how we have to, what we have to fight. It's like knowing your enemy, mm-hmm. right? Right. So I, everybody in my family has diabetes. I don't have the, di- I don't have the diabetes gene though. Right. I don't know if you did or not. I can't remember. I remember. But I don't have the diabetes gene. I had the sugar gene. That I would crave yeah. sugar and react right. negatively to it. Yeah. And I don't have that one either. No. But I, I do have the obesity gene. Oh, interesting. <laughs> How nice is that? So I got the obesity gene, but not the diabetes gene, which is weird because everybody had obesity and diabetes. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, my dad had macular degeneration. I don't have that. Thank God I don't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. But I do have the Alzheimer's gene. So just wait. When I start making no sense, then check me in. Anyway, testosterone. So we, we, need, we need to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have to do is basically, you know, even 23 and me will do that, that you right. know, you can right. self-assess marketing market. Yeah. You know, they can, they will, that's a um, genetic program you can order, but um, you are born with a certain, certain genetic challenge, program. genetic challenge. Yeah. And you have to know your challenges. You could probably know it by how your body responds. And then, but it's no good to say just, it's because of my mom. 
and that's an excuse. No, or you my, live in a culture where certain foods are available. The manufacturing process is standardized. You have choices. The marketing process is you know, impressive. So our whole reason for having this discussion today is saying it, is that it is out there and it needs to be concerned. There's not a panacea answer. There's not a one-size-fits-all answer. There's not a magic bullet. We really agree with the idea of mindful eating, mm -hmm. but we also agree with the idea of responsible eating and exercise regimens and changing your lifestyle, not your food consumption not just your food consumption. That's right. So hopefully you will think about it. Maybe you want to read her book, read some of the other books, but hopefully it's a topic that you approach with some, some logic and some data and some intentionality and not just emotional flooding or angry reactions one way or the other. Or saying just, okay, let me eat anything I want. Right. Thank you very much. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.